Alright, block two. Perfectly. I'm gonna grind down the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, before we jump into this video, I gotta drop some stoke right now. Save the date this coming Monday, October 30th. I got a merch shop going live and we actually got some samples here. As you see, we got the OG style thin hoodie in the stoke design with a little mountain running up it. We got the new CW logo in the corner and we got that in t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies. Then we got the over dreaming design with all the features on the back so stoked right now super high quality and then we got the classic you love to hear it the embroidery and then the fat you love to hear it logo on the back and we're also dropping on monday a brand new you love to hear it podcast and then finally dude one of my favorite new designs we got the don't become a feature with the back print just homie getting aired over as he's lounging on the knuckle we're gonna jump back into the videos and the instagram clips that i was doing last year of kind of breaking down why people maybe have an unfortunate event happen in the park we're trying to keep people enlightened knowledgeable and safe so if you guys are stoking and you're trying to support i literally have not dropped a merch line since last January. So it's been almost 10 months and stoked to have some stuff here now. So who knows when I'm going to get the next batch out. Hopefully we'll get another one by Christmas, but we got a pretty, pretty slow track record with the merch. So if you guys are trying to get something and get stoked and support for this preseason, www.caseywillax.com to support the dream. I appreciate you guys. Let's jump into this video here. Last night, I did a 30 minute session on one of these snowboard addictions. I've tried them once before, but I never really had a full blown session. They make two different styles here. They got the trampoline board, which is a bit more stiff. And then they have the jib board, which is so much more flexy than the trampoline board and simple, easy to install, just like regular bindings. We put it together last night, we gave it 25 minutes, and at first, I was a little suspect because actually training for snowboarding is very difficult. Halfway through the session, I was fully convinced, fully addicted. Fully exhausted and I got to work on what I felt like was some kind of real snowboarding tricks before there was actually snow on the ground, before I was strapped into my real board, before there was real rails in front of me. And I wanna give you guys just my breakdown as we go over some of the clips of how these things work, the pros, the cons, things that I think that they could improve on, things that I think are incredible. And yeah, let's dive into this right now. First things first, overall, just the ability to be able to strap in and work on ollieing and work on the shoulder rotation and the motion of how you approach the rail is basically exactly the same as snowboarding. So as we see here, ollieing on 50-50s, front side, back side, really good to help your approach and the way that you look at the rail or the way that you look at the end of the rail. Once you start doing 180s, here's where the first con that I would say comes in. They don't make the board in really long sizes and the way that you need to practice doing spins onto rails, you have to be so careful and you have to be so drawn out in the way that you pop and don't pre-turn the nose or tail of the board when you're spinning. I have a scar on one of my shins when I started snowboarding and I tried learning my first cab 180s onto rails. I was mad chill one morning, warming up. I had my headphones in, I was being super lazy and I tried to cab 180 and I clipped the nose of my board on the rail and I taco shinned this thing so bad, dude. It was one of the worst cuts I've ever had. I've almost never let that happen again because of the learning process and just the 
absolute brute pain that went through my entire body. And I think that if they were to make a version of this board that was actually the same length as yours, even if it's more heavy, even if it's harder to do the jib tricks, it would be a lot more realistic. But for what this is and how small everything is, I think it works really well. So I was very adamant about drawing out and really holding the tips of my board when I ollie and pop before I spin, if I'm doing a spin onto a rail. So being able to practice 180s on both ways, incredible. Being able to practice holding your foot over the rail on your binding is incredible. And then here's what I wanna break down that is so amazing that this thing helps with is if you're having problems board sliding and bringing it back to regular versus going to fakie, then you can actually start looking and noticing how your shoulders are. And if you open up your front shoulder before you pop onto a rail, when you pop, it kind of counters the turn that you had with your shoulder being open. And when you land on the board slide, automatically your body wants to snap back to regular. Then there's a completely different way to do a board slide if you want to go to fakie. As you can see, my shoulder's closed and I use the momentum as I approach to throw the shoulder open. And as soon as you get on the rail in a board slide, your body wants to continue spinning. So initiating more force with this is how you end up doing 270s and initiating just a little force is how you go to fakie, but counteracting that is how you actually hold on to your edge locked in toe side and practice ollieing, snapping your board over, hitting the lip slide and pulling it back to regular. I do believe that it's really good for that. Then we also have just the aspect of balancing over your binding, focusing on getting low on that one leg, keeping your center of gravity square over the rail. And once you wanna start progressing to harder tricks, like pretzels is when you can actually focus on making your back shoulder counteract as you're ollieing into the board slide to get into that board slide position while looking the other way almost, and it causes you to snap the 270 back. So I think this board and this whole setup is really good for actually working on physically getting over the rail, physically holding your balance over the rail on one foot on the correct binding. I think it's good for helping your approach into spinning onto the rails and for working on different exits, whether fakey or regular or pretzel out of your board slides. It's also really gnarly. So then to jump into one more con, isn't really that bad of a thing, but when you're snowboarding, you have momentum, you're going towards the end of the rail, you want your trajectory to be straight down the hill. And this thing is kind of hard to get into your board slide per se, and then do a 270 and land in the middle. You always kind of get forced to the left or to the right, unless you're ollieing with speed and trying to consciously ride straight out of it, which I only did once. But I don't think it's that much of a con because you're pretty centered and you're pretty balanced over the rail. And when you do your popping, either to the left or the right of the rail to land it, it doesn't throw you off that much from a real 270 out. So then you have, the 270s on, which once again, you have to be very careful thinking that you have these tricks once you're doing them on this because I did every trick in the book yesterday, including things like switch nose presses, including things like Nate House, like Ollie nose press pivot 360s where I probably wouldn't be able to do those on a rail. So it does give you a little sense of false confidence but I think that confidence is gonna be a good booster for doing 270s and stuff, as long as you know that these are the equivalent to doing these tricks on two foot features, which I always have done in real life is go to the smaller grommet style parks, learn my 270s and hardway 270s and pullbacks and stuff there, and then try to bring them to bigger features. But the 270 game is next level. Being able to lock your board in practice swinging your arms and putting your head in specific locations and whipping that 270 without clipping your nose or tail is so huge and this thing was so fun. There's one thing that I really wanna explain that is so beneficial with this board and that is basically 180s on but learning how to pull them back the opposite way as well and just learning the same thing that I was explaining about your board slide 270s and the shoulder movements and how certain movements make your body continue to spin and certain movements allow your body to snap back. Looking at the backside 180 onto a rail into switch 50-50 is the best example I can think of because your original backside 180 on, if you just whip your upper body with it and you do the 180, you land on it, you see your upper body just keeps turning and then you'll end up either doing a cab 180 out or if you want to pop a cab three out. It's 
the same thing with front side. If you whip your shoulders and you front side 180 onto a feature, when you land, your body wants to keep spinning. So you're gonna probably do a 180 out. Real technical snowboarding, once you get into it, you notice everybody wants to either stop their rotation or pull the rotation in the opposite direction. And I think if you watch my head here, in order to stop the rotation, all you do is a slight advancement of your shoulders, your upper body and your head, looking at where you're gonna go. So then when you do the 180, all you're practicing is spinning your lower body onto the rail and the movement stops, you land switch. If you want to completely pull it back the opposite direction, then you advance your upper body, your shoulders and your head even further so that when you snap your legs into the 180, your upper body counteracts it and wants to pop back to regular. And then there's the last one, which is basically your upper body and head are done with the trick. So that way when you pop and you do your 180 and you land on the rail, you kind of grab it with your toes and your heels. You can work on that flexing and that real Nate House style of gripping the rail and you stop and your upper body is already done with the trick from the takeoff. And because you snapped and you locked in with that 180, there's a spring effect and your upper body actually wants to go the other way. So if you can hold yourself and grab that angle of the rail, it's really hard to explain, but you can feel the difference between your body going to the right and then when you stop and you grasp the rail like a freaking monkey, it wants to pop the other way and your body springs Sean Murphy style, back one in, switch back three out, which I don't really have on a snowboard and to be able to do these and practice these for 10, 15 minutes and then fully lock them in <laughs> literally made me feel like I, I could do these on a rail. And then you see what I meant earlier, how on a normal rail, when you're locked in perfectly, you get that back 180, you go to pop out switch, you're staying perfectly centered over the rail like I was right here. And I would have stomped this trick had the rail not been completely underneath me. So. If you're really on point, you could just land back on the rail, but that is the one thing that's a little bit different than actual snowboarding is the ride out. You can work on presses. I was pretty bad at them and getting to work on those was huge. You can work on going off of the toes versus off of the heels. I think just working on the ability to open up your front shoulder on a front board and look at where you're going down the rail, that could transfer really well to snowboarding. Then the next most crucial thing that I would say that this snowboard addiction actually helps you with is the difference in your body. You will notice when you ride regular all the time versus when you try to ride switch, I noticed that my shoulders are very closed when I'm riding goofy footed switch for me. And when I'm riding regular, my whole upper body is open facing what would be down the hill. And when you're locked in like this, you can actually see your hips, and you can try to push them forwards and work on aligning yourself, realigning yourself to that symmetry and get as comfortable in your switch stance as you can in your regular stance. And then once you do that, that's when you start to work on switch lip slides, switch 50-50s, switch lip slide 270s. Also this thing is incredible for switch ups. If you can get on a binding and pop over to the other one, it's very difficult to practice that on a snowboard, but this makes lock. it so easy to do switch ups, 270s, lock in, front board, pop over. But then coming into the hardest thing, which would be 270s, once again, I was explaining, when you do a 270, you pop, you do your 270, you land on the rail, you continue spinning most of the time. When you get better at snowboarding, you want to be able to dislocate that upper and lower body, do the 270, push it to a board side, and then bring it back the opposite way. The end goal would be the opposite 270 pretzel, but that's a whole different category. And with this, because you didn't have the momentum and because you were forced to hold that edge, that is, I believe, one of the most crucial benefits that you could have from this board because a lot of people start to pre-turn and scrub on the takeoff. They clip their nose or they end up doing a 90 on the takeoff and they really only 180 onto the rail. This forces you to really hold that edge, pop up and then do the 270 and lock in. To pull those back is so difficult. And I think this board really allows you to grip and flex. You feel the twist, tilt, pivot pressure when you're on the rail and you can grip it and pop out like a monkey back to 90. It's really good practice. There's a lot of tricks I went to do and I completely forgot like the little nuances like turning the head on a backside 270 way early so that you can push your legs out, lock in and then pull it back. If I went straight to the hill, I, I think I would have had a couple hours of having to relearn these things. But because I was here and I got this practice in, it did give me a little advancement. So all these 270 pullbacks were so fun. Once again, it's a little unrealistic to think that you have all these tricks right away, but dude, it feels 
so good to basically be snowboarding. It's a, a little uh, a little tight on the feet, and I had to unstrap, you know, every like 10 minutes, but I was going so hard. I was so addicted. I was exhausted at first, and when I started doing it, I just honed right in, and I literally felt like I was snowboarding. Yeah, this is one of the better things that you can do for snowboarding in the off season to train your tricks down. I mean, to be able to balance be strapped in over your binding and practice opening up your shoulder or dislocating your upper and lower body, getting your head around to the landing. There's so many things that this will actually, I believe, translate over to on the hill when you get back. So if you guys are stoked on the snowboard addiction, they freaking hooked me up and they sent me the jib board and this jib bar and these bindings. And maybe a couple weeks ago, they sent me the trampoline board and some bindings. This thing is just a little bit stiffer, but I believe that anytime I'm gonna do a trampoline board like this, I'll be at a trampoline facility where they'll actually have one of these too. So I really don't need this thing. I think online they're like three to $500 total. And I would like to give this thing away because they hooked me up. I'm super grateful to have this little training thing here and that's all that I need. And since you guys are incredible, I always like to give back to you guys. First, I gotta say we have a discount, www.caseywillax.com slash discounts. If you guys are trying to get yourself a board and you don't wanna pay full price, they give a kickback to me anytime anybody buys one. Normally, I ask you guys to do something for me and then I pick a winner. But I was thinking and I was like, let's let you guys pick how I should do the giveaway. So drop a comment on this video just with an idea of how we should do the giveaway. Whichever comment gets the most likes, we will pick that way to do the giveaway. Because normally I just say, text me here or follow me here, but it's not all about me right now. I wanna get you guys stoked. I wanna give you a kickback for this preseason and get one of you guys on one of these boards training and you'd be shredding in no time. So if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, we're trying to pump out as much snowboarding content as we can. Puking in Washington, it's puking in Colorado. Opening day in Colorado is this Sunday. It's puking in Utah and it's puking in Tahoe. So the season is right around the corner. We're frothing out of our minds. Don't forget, we got new merch merch, www.caseywillox.com. Support the dream. We will see you on Hill here very shortly.
down the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.